TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Gazan Islamists launch a rocket toward Israel's southern communities over the weekend, drawing an Israeli retaliatory response. The foreign ministers of Cyprus, Greece, Israel and the United Arab Emirates conclude a multilateral meeting aimed at further deepening regional cooperation on multiple areas of joint interest. U.S. President Joe Biden voices satisfaction that despite the latest developments, the Islamic Republic of Iran remains engaged to try and revive the 2015 nuclear agreement. Palestinian Islamists launched yet another rocket from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities over the weekend, drawing a retaliatory response against militant installations within the coastal enclave. Rocket alert sirens sounded on Friday night in a number of Israeli communities along the Gazan security fence, forcing thousands of civilians into bomb shelters within the IDF Home Front Command's instructed 15 seconds. Thankfully, the projectile landed in an uninhabited area, causing no injuries or damage. Consequently, during the early hours of Saturday morning, Israeli fighter jets and attack helicopters struck a number of military targets belonging to Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The IDF spokesperson's unit confirmed that the target struck included a Hamas training facility, an anti-aircraft missile launcher post in development, a factory used to produce concrete for the digging of offensive terror tunnels, and a munitions storage warehouse, as well as infrastructure of an offensive terror tunnel belonging to the Hamas terror organization. In other news, the Israeli Air Force has joined Greece, the United States, Cyprus, Canada, the United Arab Emirates and France in a joint exercise of the Atlantic Armed Forces titled Iniochos at the Greek Andravida Air Base. This is the first time in which the Israeli Air Force participates in the joint maneuver, which includes dozens of military aircraft. According to the IDF's official statement, the drill will simulate scenarios of air-to-air -air combat, air superiority and advanced surface-to-air missile threats above enemy territory. It is important to highlight that the Israeli participation underscores the deepening of bilateral relations between Athens and Jerusalem. These relations were further bolstered yesterday when the Israeli Ministry of Defense and the Atlantic Ministry of National Defense ratified an agreement which amounts to approximately 5.5 billion shekels, equal to a little under 1.4 billion euros or 1.69 billion US dollars, which includes the establishment of operation of an international flight training center for the Atlantic Air Force by the Israeli Aerospace Defense Corporation, Elbit Systems, over a period of 22 years. Turning to the Cypriot city of Paphos, where Cypriot Foreign Minister Nikos Christodolides hosted his Greek, Israeli and Emirati counterparts for a multilateral meeting aimed at further deepening regional cooperation on multiple sectors of joint interest. It is no exaggeration to say that your presence, our gathering in this uh, stunning backdrop of the Mediterranean Sea, is of a symbolic importance. An extended meeting between uh, like-minded countries of the wider region following the historic normalization agreement between UAE and Israel is seen and of itself a message. It signifies the new era of uh, new era our region has entered, driven by a common vision our countries and other countries of the region share one of the wider Eastern Mediterranean, Middle East, and Gulf as an area of stability, prosperity, and peace through cooperation. The Emirati Foreign Minister seized the opportunity for his part to highlight Abu Dhabi's aspirations for the region, which are evidently shared by its partners present at the multilateral meeting. We share today our visions on future cooperation and explored new avenues to expand our relationship in various sectors, including trade, investment, manufacturing, technology, science, health services, and food products. The UAE is seeking an ambitious and positive agenda in the region, and the Abrahamic Accords 
were mainly driven by the necessity of an alternative strategic view of the region based on stability, prosperity, and opportunity. The Abraham Accords, which by mediation of the United States under the previous Trump administration realized four separate normalization agreements between Israel and Muslim-majority states, has been singled out as a significant accomplishment which contributes to regional peace, prosperity and stability. Hence, Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi urged additional countries and entities to join the circle of peace. Along deliberations on the deepening of multilateral cooperation, Minister Ashkenazi also highlighted the joint acknowledgement of the need to confront regional concerns jointly regarded as such together. We discussed many possibilities for building the prosperity and the stability of the region, yet we also took time to discuss challenges that Iran and Hezbollah and other extremists pose to the stability of the Middle East and to the regional peace. We will do whatever it takes to prevent this extremist to success and definitely will prevent this regime from having nuclear weapons. The Greek foreign minister for his part seized the opportunity to highlight common interests which unite the four participating countries as well as the exchange of views on common concerns which must be tackled in the wider region of the eastern Mediterranean. Today we also had the opportunity to exchange views on areas of common concern such as developments in the eastern Mediterranean, Libya, Syria and Yemen. In this context, I had the opportunity to inform my colleagues about my recent visits to Libya over the past few days. In view of the elections that are scheduled to take place in December, one fundamental precondition is the withdrawal of all foreign forces present on the ground in Libya. I also addressed the meetings I had yesterday in Ankara. In this context, I reiterated that each side has its own views, clearly manifested during the press conference many of you may have seen. The refer to press conference following a meeting between Foreign Minister Nikos Dendias and his Turkish counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu in Ankara escalated when the top diplomat of Athens made the following remarks. And in this case, the European Union has a deep response. Έτσι, το ενδεχόμενο λήψη μέτρων υπάρχει πάντα στο τραπέζι του Συμβουλίου. Εάν υπάρξουν παραβατικέ και παράνομε ενέργειε σε βάρο τη κυριαρχία και κυριαρχικών δικαιωμάτων μα, υπάρχει πάντοτε το ενδεχόμενο λήψη μέτρων. Βεβαίω, απευχόμαστε τι παράνομε ενέργειε ε, με όλη μα την καρδιά. The Turkish top diplomat immediately voiced his outrage. Da Yunanistan'ı itham edici bir söylem içinde bulunmadım. Ama bu ilk görüşmenin biz daha pozitif bir atmosferde devam etmesini arz ediyorduk. Fakat Nikodendias yaptığı konuşmada maalesef ülkeme yönelik son derece kabul edilemez ithamlarda bulundu. Öncelikle Türkiye'nin Yunanistan'ın egemenlik haklarını ihlal ettiğini söyledi. Bunu kabul etmemiz mümkün değil. Tüm bunlara rağmen Türkiye olarak biz Üçüncü taraflar yerine iki ülke olarak tüm bu meseleleri konuşmaya ve bundan sonra uluslararası hukuk sistemi çerçevesinde samimi bir diyalog çerçevesinde bu konularda görüş ayrılıklarımızı azaltmaya ve işbirliğimizi güçlendirmeye hazırız. Başkalarının bir faydası olmaz. Başkaları ancak silah satar, başka amaçlar güder ama biz meselelerimizi çözebiliriz. Turning to Washington, where U.S. President Joe Biden referred to Iran's decision to raise its uranium enrichment to 60% as unhelpful, it voiced satisfaction of the Ayatollah regime's continued agreement to engage in indirect talks with the United States on seeking ways to revive the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, which is the technical term for the 2015 nuclear agreement. We do not support and do not think it's at all helpful that Iran is saying it's going to move to enrich to 60 percent. It is contrary to the agreement. We are, though, nonetheless, uh, pleased that Iran has continued to agree to engage in discussions, uh, in direct discussions with us and with our, our, our partners on how we move forward. 
and what is needed to allow us to move back into the JOPCA so that we're part of it again, that we should have never gotten out of it, in my view, uh, without uh, us making concessions that I'm, we're just not willing to make. And so the discussions are underway. I think it's premature to make a judgment as to what the outcome will be, but we're still talking. The second round of indirect talks in Vienna, backed by the remaining members of the JCPOA, including France, Britain, Germany, Russia and China, concluded on Saturday. And while the talks were overshadowed by growing concerns regarding the Islamic Republic's decision to further distance itself from the 2015 agreement, the Chinese representative of the talks revealed that the relevant parties agreed to further pick up the pace. Parties have agreed to uh, uh, further pick up their pace in subsequent days by engaging more extensive work, more extensive substantive work on sanction lifting, as well as other uh, relevant issues. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up China in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.